Howdy everybody. How are you today? Hope everybody's doing well. I'm Mr. Bob, Bob Langston with the North Carolina Zoo, your neighborhood naturalist. Thank you once again for letting me spend a little time with you today. It's another wonderful overcast day here in beautiful Ashboro, North Carolina. We're into the summer. We've passed the summer solstice. So now humidity is up. And as we get into the summer, there actually are two things that start showing up. I'm going to talk about one of those today. Stick with me. Not long ago, I was talking a little bit about clover and honeybees, two species we call non-native residents. And we reserve that term non-native residents for uh, certain animals because they live here they don't do necessarily a lot of damage. And in some cases, they've been beneficial, as is the case with clover, and as is the case with honeybees. So in the interest of equal time, I thought I might talk a little bit and introduce you to one of the non-native resident species that's not particularly positive, that does tend to show up this time of year. Now we reserve a specific name for animals that come in they're not natives, they get established, and they can sometimes outcompete some, excuse me, this isn't just for animals, this is also for plants as well. We'll just say species, back up and say, that these are animals and plants that have gotten established and they're not particularly helpful because in some cases they can outcompete the natives. Now, of the two that show up in the summertime, one is a native and you might know them as June bugs or June beetles. The other one is not native. It's an alien invasive. It's gotten established and they live here all over the place. They do some damage and partly, especially when they're juveniles. Now they spend a year as a juvenile. The critter I'm talking about, Japanese beetles are initially native to Japan and uh, it's believed that they came in sometime about a hundred years ago in shipments of flowers. It's one of the reasons why we quarantine certain products when they come in. It's one reason why we need to get certifications that various agricultural products and animals don't bring in diseases and invasive species when they come. That's kind of one of the big pluses of our current inspection procedure. <clears throat> now these guys, as I said, these are, uh, they're called scarab beetles and watch both when I have this one in my hand, they can fly so he may fly away. Um, watch this or the little uh, video clip I have later of them uh, in action. And the one of the things that is a real differentiator for scarab beetles, look at their antenna. Their antenna look like a Q-tip. It's a little short antenna with a little ball on the end, and that is one of those typical things. You can see it in the video I took later. I don't know if you'll see this one when I have it in my hand. Now these are much smaller, these guys, much smaller than June bugs. The June beetles are about twice, maybe even a little bit more this size. The June bugs are natives. They're also kind of green, shiny beetles. Uh, as I said, we call these scarab beetles, and scarab beetles is a large group that incorporates the largest of beetles. It also incorporates the dung beetles as well. Even though the action is not what you would call fast and fierce, I did promise to have some Japanese beetles in action and doing what they do. This particular one is dining on a zinnia leaf, one of the ornamental flowers in my front yard. We'll take a look at another one in just a moment, but in the meantime, you can get a little look at those antenna again. These are scarab beetles, so their antenna look a little bit like a stick with a little ball on the end of it, right at the tip of their uh, head. As they walk on down and chow down on the leaves, these are adults. The adults emerge from the ground about this time every year. They'll eat, they'll mate, They'll crawl down into the dirt and lay eggs. Those eggs will hatch and they live as grubs in the soil for about a year. Now I mentioned the white stripes on the rear end. It's not a stripe that runs down the side. You almost see that little barber pole pattern right under their wings on the back. The uh, young ones, as I said, are called grubs and it looks a little bit like a caterpillar. 
Actually, somebody asked me yesterday, what does that grub look like? And I told them it looked kind of like a finger. It actually does look a little bit like your pinky finger, only sort of pale and white. If you look on one end, you will see the six legs. Tried to find some out in the yard yesterday and today. Unfortunately, most of them have become adults and they're now eating some plant in my yard. You've got the stripe, you've got these guys eating. One of the things they do, as you can see here, is that uh, they can actually eat all of the soft parts of a leaf and leave the harder veins. Sometimes it looks like they're skeletonizing the leaf. That's one of the big issues that happens with these guys. They will leave the skeleton of the leaf and not enough to really photosynthesize and produce food and nutrition for the plant. So as you can see, the Japanese beetles go a long way as far as tearing up the leaves of plants. One of the problems that does is it interferes with the plant's ability to photosynthesize and create its own food and build its own structure. So, these guys, alien invasives, probably not very helpful. Interestingly, uh, in Japan, they're not considered to be quite as harmful because there are quite a number of insects and birds that will eat them. Here in the United States, one of the, <laughs> one of the birds that uh, actually uh, does a pretty good job of keeping them under control and eating them is also not a native. They're starlings that came in from Europe back in the mid-1800s. More on those guys a little later. So Japanese beetles, one of our alien invasive species, you're likely to run into those this time of the year. During the summer, watch out for them. A lot of folks do a, go, spend a lot of money and time trying to get rid of them. Sometimes it means putting pesticides on our lawns. That's probably, that can have some unintended consequences as well. So that's a big issue uh, to say. We uh, used to make these little traps that would attract them in, and unfortunately it would attract more than we're actually eating my dad's tomatoes anyway. So without further ado, let me just mention that uh, we are still accepting registrations for our virtual summer camps down at the North Carolina Zoo. Visit our website at www.nczoo.org, and you can find out all kinds of details about our uh, virtual summer camps that are going on. We also have some series of other uh, videos that are on our Facebook page. If you'd like to find a little bit more about those, look up Educa Adventures in Education on Facebook. For the North Carolina Zoo, I'm Mr. Bob, your neighborhood naturalist, and this is a Japanese beetle. Thanks guys, I appreciate you letting me join you for a while. Y'all have a great week. Take care of yourselves and be safe.